Waking up spiritually is akin to finally breaking the surface after a long dive. Suddenly, you find yourself gasping for the fresh air of reality, while others continue swimming in a pool of illusions. This awakening changes the fabric of your existence. From that point on, there's no going back, doors behind you vanish, and all that's left is the path ahead. In this newfound freedom, you also discover a sense of confinement. It's like standing on a mountaintop, breathing the fresh air, but looking down to see people you care about stuck in the valley below. They seem content engrossed in their daily routines, seeking comfort, power, and the illusion of control. You can't help but wonder, is my awakening a blessing or a burden? Why am I seeking self-discovery when others are content in their chosen ignorance? It's a challenging journey, but rest assured, the trek is worth it. Though the terrain may be rough, the vistas you'll witness are beyond imagination. But just like any transformative experience, spiritual awakening comes with its own set of side effects. They're neither good nor bad, they simply are. Think of it as a period of adjustment, like acclimating to a new altitude. You're breathing different air now, and it may take a little time to get used to it. Today, we'll delve into the lesser known side effects of spiritual awakening, those hushed whispers that nobody prepares you for, but almost everyone experiences. One, you are confused. Picture this, you just opened your eyes after being submerged in a vivid dream, and for a moment, everything is quiet. Then reality floods in, replacing the silence with questions and puzzling thoughts. Your mind starts to whirl, asking, what just happened? Is this normal? Why is this happening to me? This is the labyrinth of confusion, and it's a place many of us find ourselves in after a spiritual awakening. Even if you spend years on the spiritual path, reading sacred texts, and diving deep into practices. The experience of awakening is like landing in an unknown country, where the language, customs, and even the air feel foreign. The mind loves to navigate known landscapes, but awakening is a territory it can't map out. It's beyond the scope of imagination, something you can't prepare for with mere thoughts or concepts. So, you begin to grasp for anchors in spiritual teachings, books, and philosophies. You start scouring scriptures, seeking the wisdom of the ancients, yearning to validate your experience and give it a name. So what can you do in the midst of confusion? Feeling confused is natural, but don't let it escalate into panic or obsessive searching. While it's tempting to find immediate answers, sometimes the most profound wisdom comes from sitting with the unknown. There's a lesson in the very confusion you're experiencing. It's like a fog that forces you to slow down and pay attention to your surroundings to become present. Instead of compulsively seeking external validations, allow moments of silence to seep in. Silence in its subtle power serves as a bridge to a deeper understanding. It connects you to a state of being that doesn't require immediate answers, a space where you can just be. When you quiet the chatter of the mind, you create room for your inner wisdom to speak. So, while it's natural to turn to spiritual texts or teachings for clarity, remember that the ultimate compass is within you. You don't always need a map to navigate the waters of awakening. Sometimes you just need to be still and let the currents guide you. Your journey may be full of questions right now, but these questions are signposts, nudging you to explore further and deeper. Instead of fearing the unknown, try embracing it. The beauty of awakening is that it continually unfolds, revealing layers you didn't even know existed. Confusion isn't a roadblock. It's more like a detour, a winding path that may be longer, but is rich in scenic vistas that you would have missed on the straight road. Take it as an invitation to dig deeper, to listen more closely, and to exercise a level of patience and openness you may not have tapped into before. Two, you feel disconnected. Imagine finding a new radio station that broadcasts music resonating deep within your soul. 
But as you tune in, you realize other stations are now static, distorted, or completely silent. This encapsulates the feeling of disconnection that often comes with spiritual awakening. As you draw closer to your authentic self, you may find that the circle around you begins to change. Interactions with old friends become tricky. You find yourself retreating into silence when once you would engage freely. Topics that used to captivate you now feel superficial. People who were your anchors in the past suddenly become like distant stars, still visible, but far away. Your priorities shift rapidly. Awakening can feel like you're inhabiting a new skin. And it's not uncommon to feel lonely in this transformative phase. You may find yourself yearning for meaningful conversations and connections that fuel, rather than deplete, your spiritual energy. What can you do amidst the disconnection? Feeling disconnected is not a call for you to squeeze back into your old pants, so to speak. Embrace the uniqueness of your new self, even if it confuses or alienates others. This journey isn't about them, it's about you. As you evolve, you may find it difficult not to get influenced or hurt by the majority, but it's crucial to remember why you embarked on this journey in the first place, to be authentic to yourself. This period of doubt and vulnerability is a delicate time that requires safeguarding your newfound self like a tender sprout. Connect with spiritual allies who listen without judgment and provide a sanctuary for your evolving beliefs. Choose spaces where your heart feels heard rather than places that force you into explaining yourself or defending your journey. It's akin to being a sapling in a forest of ancient trees. While they may tower over you, remember that you too are growing at your own pace and in your own direction. It may be isolating at first, but you're not alone in this. Reach out to kindred spirits who can offer nourishment to your soul, the same way the rain and soil nurture the sapling. Disconnection isn't so much an end as it is a transitional phase. It's like crossing a bridge that links the old world to the new. On the other side, you'll find different but equally valuable connections that align with your authentic self. Three increased pain. Awakening isn't a magic switch that suddenly dissolves the ego and bathes you in perpetual serenity. In fact, becoming awakened often means you'll experience more pain, not less. Why is that? Because awakening peels back layers of ignorance. It's like flipping a switch that turns on a brighter light in a room. Now you can see everything, even the dust, and the stains that were always there but not visible before. When awakened, you'll find it easier to slip into a state of heightened awareness. However, habits are powerful, and sometimes you'll revert to your old, unconscious ways. It's during these times that the contrast becomes palpable, and you feel a sense of pain that's deeper than before. In an unawakened state, you might not even realize the impact of your actions on yourself or others. But once awakened, every emotion, every interaction carries weight. This is because your connection to your inner self, as well as to the world around you, becomes more intense. It's not just about your own pain anymore. You become acutely aware of the suffering of others and even the collective anguish of the world. Your senses are heightened. Empathy and sensitivity, once side products, now become the main features of your awakened state. As counterintuitive as it may seem, the pain you feel is actually a positive indicator. It shows that you are deeply in tune with life. Attempting to block out the pain won't work. If you try, it will only return with greater intensity. Instead, find a way to express this heightened sensitivity. Let it out. If tears come, let them flow. If a scream is building within you, let it out. Channel this emotion into creative endeavors like writing, painting, or gardening. Allowing yourself to express pain is not a sign of weakness, but of profound strength. By giving pain an outlet, you're not just releasing it. You're also transmuting it into something beautiful or meaningful. Think of it like a pressure release valve. 
If the pressure gets too high, you need to let some of it out to prevent an explosion. In essence, increased pain post-awakening is a call to be more authentic, more compassionate, and more in tune with the complexities of life. Acknowledge the pain, but also see it as a tool for deeper understanding and connection, both with yourself and with the world around you. 4. You go through an existential crisis. The journey of awakening often ushers you into a perplexing stage, an existential crisis. Sure, the term gets tossed around casually, like a trendy buzzword, by many who question their place in the world. But when you're truly awakened, the inquiry of who am I stops being a casual riddle and becomes a pressing dilemma that gnaws at you from the inside out. Your old identity, the one you wore like a familiar jacket, suddenly feels too tight or too loose. It's as if you've outgrown it, yet you're not quite sure what your new size is. You're caught in a limbo, unable to connect with your old self, but also unsure about this emergent you. Questions like, why am I here, or what's my purpose, are no longer abstract. They become urgent, compelling you to seek answers. This is a tumultuous phase. It's like standing at a crossroads, but instead of two or three paths, there are countless routes spiraling in all directions, each one claiming to be your true path. It's daunting, and let's be honest, a bit terrifying. Here's what you can do during your existential crisis. Firstly, acknowledge that you can't turn back. Your old self is a chapter that's ended, and trying to reopen it will only bring you discontent. Secondly, don't rush the process. Unanswered questions are uncomfortable, but they also signify that you're on the brink of a deeper understanding. If you have access to a mentor or guide, now's the time to lean on their wisdom. However, if you're going at it alone, place your trust in the universe. Think of it this way. If you are on a long road trip and you don't see any signs, it doesn't mean you're lost. It just means you haven't reached the next marker. Continue driving, take in the view, and before you know it, you'll find the sign or signs that guide you toward your next phase of the journey. Your existential crisis may feel like a never-ending loop of uncertainty, but it's also a stage that almost every awakened individual has to navigate. And remember, the fact that you're questioning is proof that you're growing. Even if answers aren't readily available, the quest for them is a form of progress. It might not seem like it now, but this is a valuable step toward a deeper understanding of who you truly are. 5. You may feel a sense of entitlement. Awakening can be so illuminating that it's easy to feel like you've unlocked some cosmic secret. It's not uncommon to start seeing yourself as someone special, a guide in a world that seems lost. The belief that you're chosen or superior can easily creep into your consciousness. You may find yourself with a strong urge to awaken others, to shake them awake for what you perceive as their betterment. Yet, this is where you have to be cautious. Your path is just that, yours. Everyone has their own journey, complete with individual lessons and timing. Trying to accelerate someone else's spiritual progress is like trying to open a flower bud by force. It won't quicken the blooming and could even harm the process. Don't mistake your empathy for a free pass to give advice no one asked for. Good intentions can sometimes translate into unwarranted interference. So hold your wisdom close unless it's sought. Your primary tool should be love, pure, non-judgmental love. Love can be a gentle nudge that allows people to consider new perspectives without feeling pressured. Think of your conversations as a cup of tea. Love should be the water, the base, and your wisdom should be like the tea leaves, subtly flavoring the interaction, but not overwhelming it. If someone is ready and open, they'll ask for more tea leaves. Otherwise, a warm cup of water is comforting in itself. Remember, awakening is a unique and deeply personal experience. While your insights might feel like the missing puzzle pieces for someone else's journey, 
that might not be ready to fit them into their own life picture. And that's perfectly okay. So continue to share your love freely and keep your wisdom at hand for those who truly seek it. Awakening is both a gift and a challenge, a dance between clarity and confusion. Your authentic journey will guide you and your empathy will enrich the world around you. Thank you for watching. If this resonated with you, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. For deeper dives into spirituality, consider joining our membership or supporting us on Patreon.